Alright, some of you might be wondering why am I wearing this weird mustache thing. Um, but first of all, we are all in San Francisco, so why are you even asking? <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, though, uh, I had a bike accident the other day, so I want to save you all from some eyesore. Uh, plus, it's all Halloween time, so let's all have some fun around it. All right, so back to the serious business. We are all video engineers here, so I'm sure when something went wrong uh, when we are watching video, something like a rebuffer event or um, um, optimized quality, we might start wondering and wearing a debugging head and thinking what went wrong here, right? Um, some of us might be wondering, hmm, is this the Wi-Fi issue? Or if you are someone like me who have been working on adaptive streaming for a long time, you might be start thinking about which part of the algorithm we can optimize for. Um, or should we upgrade the internet plan? But how many of us we think about maybe there's a connection between these quality issues with the configurations we have inside the network routers. I certainly did not think about that before this project. That's why I'm excited uh, to share some of our observations at Netflix. Uh, my name is T.Y. Uh, when I'm not busy having bike accidents, uh, I work on the adaptive streaming engine at Netflix. Uh, my, myself and my team are also responsible for the playback quality at Netflix. This is a joint work with a bunch of people at Netflix, as well as Stanford University. All right, uh, before we dig into the detail, I want to talk briefly about how Netflix deliver our content. Um, so before a title is launched, we will first preposition this content into local content servers around the globe. So for users in Japan, for example, if they want to watch uh, Stranger Things, they don't need to go all the way back to California. Instead, they can just go to their local content servers and get the content directly from there. And there are many benefits uh, by operating under this model. We have uh, lower latency, we can save on some congestion, and overall, you just have a better user experience. And if we focus on this last mile piece, users are usually connected to their home routers and many other network elements before they reach to our content delivery network. In the following talk, I'm just going to focus on these two ends of the network path, focusing on the home routers and our edge router at the, um, uh, our content delivery network. And on both the uplink and the downlink, there are uh, buffers on these network devices. So you might be wondering, what is the purpose of all these uh, buffers? If we uh, use the downlink as an example to, to examine what's the purpose of these things, and let's assume this box here is the network routers. These network routers essentially uh, is, uh, transfer the packets between the content servers and the home gateway. And our content server will try to figure out a rate that is matching the available bandwidth that is between our CDN and the home gateway. We don't need a buffer or uh, just a small store and forward thing if we are able to always matching or send, uh, uh, sending at a rate that is lower than the available bandwidth. But this is the internet. So as we know that available bandwidth can change and as a result, the sending rate can be larger than the available bandwidth, especially during congestion during the peak hours. As a result, we need to have a buffer to absorb the mismatch between the sending rate and the bandwidth we have. All right, so what does it mean uh, on the, the impact of the buffer sizing? For that, we first need to understand the sending rate. So most of the uh, content server around the globe, uh, they use TCP or some form of congestion control to figure out uh, the sending rate and trying to match that to the available bandwidth we have. And the way TCP work uh, is that, well, there are many variants of TCP out there, but the most popular one is low, uh, low spaced. 
So the way it works is, assuming the y-axis here is the sending rate, uh, it will just keep increasing the sending rate until we see a loss, and then it will help the sending rate and then grow it up again. And this is the way that TCP trying to converge its rate to the available bandwidth. What does that mean for the interaction with, between TCP and the buffer size? So given a size of the buffer, TCP essentially will just keep increasing sending rate until we have a full buffer inside the router. And then since there is no space for the uh, upcoming packets anymore, we will stop dropping the packets. And that's when TCP will see a loss. And you, that's when you will start converging to the available bandwidth. All right. So what is the problem with a buffer size being too big? As you just see how TCP works, that means TCP will take a long time before it starts seeing the packets being lost. And that means it will take a long time to converge the sending rate to the available bandwidth. On top of that, because the buffer is large, that means the queuing delay packets experiencing will be larger. And this is also known as the buffer bloat problem. And because the maximum queuing delay is large, that also means that uh, there are larger delay variation between the packets. All right, you might be wondering, okay, so does that mean that as long as we set the buffer to be something small, then we're fine? Well, turns out there are problems with that too. Uh, for example, we will experience a higher packet loss rate. Also, TCP might not be able to fully utilize the bandwidth if we set the buffer to be too small. Why is that? Well, if we go back to look at how TCP converts to the available bandwidth, now if we have a very small buffer, that means the area above the available bandwidth becomes smaller than the area below the available bandwidth. That means TCP will converge to something lower than the available bandwidth and utilize uh, a smaller bandwidth, which is not a good thing either. All right, so all I just have told you is actually something very well understood in our, uh, in our networking community. But what we have understood is the impact on the network level metrics. What we haven't understood, uh, well understood though, is what does all this mean to play back quality of experience? We don't know. So let's experiment and find out. Um, let's go back to uh, our delivery network. Uh, so these are our, the content servers uh, that we deploy around the globe. So when we do the experiments, what we do is pick a site and uh, uh, we actually did uh, on several sites. So this is what a site looks like. The, the benefit of our uh, network design is that in each site, we usually have two uh, identical stacks so for resilience reasons. This is perfect for doing experiments because now we can take two routers, one set it to be a small buffer size, and the other set it to be a bigger buffer size, and then see what, uh, what, uh, what the QoE would look like. Some additional uh, information about ex our experimental setup. Uh, our server used uh, a very classic TCP new Reno plus rapid act uh, replacement. Uh, our traffic is distributed equally across the two stack. So the only difference across these two stack is really just the buffer size. The first thing we want to check is, does our network level metrics move as uh, our friends in the networking community suggest? So the first thing we checked is the round trip time. And first thing we should notice that there is no difference when there is no congestion, but uh, during the peak hours, there's a big difference in terms of the round trip time which maps our understanding in the sense that smaller buffer will have lower round trip time, bigger buffer will have a larger round trip time, and that is true both in terms of the mean, RT, mean round trip time and the max round trip time uh, among the connections. All right, and the second uh, metrics we want to make sure is 
both of the uh, buffer uh, settings are uh, allowing us to uh, fully utilize the network in the sense uh, the good pool is the same. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, TCP retransmission rate, which is uh, our uh, proxy metrics for packet loss rate. And you can see that as our friends in networking community suggested, smaller uh, buffer stack will have higher packets, packet loss rate. All right, at this point, um, at the network metrics, smaller buffer has lower latency but higher retransmission rate. That doesn't suggest either way is better, right? So let's move on to look at the QoE level metrics and see which one performs better. The first metrics we look at is rebuffer rate. And here we can see that, interestingly, bigger buffer actually results in much worse rebuffer rate by almost 30% for this particular site. And in terms of play delay, uh, expect, uh, uh, I mean, as, as we expected, because smaller stack uh, have lower RTT, so their play delay is also lower. But what surprised us is the, um, the magnitude, which is in terms of seconds uh, worth of play delay differences. And that's definitely user, uh, perceivable by our users. Another thing that is, that is interesting about this play delay metrics movement is that it, not only, it doesn't, uh, only, does not only just change the user perception, it also change our, how our application behave. So on our uh, service, there's something called supplemental playback. This playback is, happens when you enter into our website or uh, our browser uh, page. Uh, and uh, trying to browse through the, the titles. When your mouse uh, hover on a box art, for example, we will start playing some trailers or other contents that supplement to the, um, to the main title. And that's what we call supplemental playback. And the reason why play delay differences actually change how this playback behaves is that if the play delay becomes so large, larger than, uh, so large, so that we actually don't have the playback started before the mouse move away, then we will have fewer uh, supplemental playback. So what we are seeing is that on browser player, smaller buffer stack actually have 30% more supplemental playback. And on TV player, we have 20% more. And the difference is just because of uh, the UI differences on different platforms. Another interesting observation is on video quality. So for a smaller stack, on average, we see a lower quality, which is interesting. Uh, but if we plot it out on as a distribution, here the x-axis is uh, percentile, and y-axis is video quality. And the way to read this graph is we draw a vertical line so that we can fix it on a certain uh, percentile. And here we can see that on the low percentile, smaller buffer stack actually improve video quality. It's just on the higher percentile, a smaller buffer uh, stack degrade the quality. So what does this mean? This means that by changing uh, the buffer size, we actually change how the resource is distributed across uh, the, the users. All right. So a summary on the impact on the buffer sizing. Uh, we know that, um, we already know from the, our networking community that buffer sizing impacts uh, network metrics. But uh, we now know that it also has an impact on our playback quality on the application level. So you might be wondering, okay, do we know what is the ideal buffer size? We actually don't know that yet. And, uh, but what we do know, though, is there is a sweet spot given a certain condition. Uh, but there are many, many factors that goes into uh, affecting the ideal uh, settings. We are seeing that different value uh, works differently on different sites. So what are the metrics, uh, factors that can affect uh, the ideal buffer sizing? Uh, router architecture, whether it's an input queue router or it, whether it's output queue routers, matters. 
the scheduling algorithm inside the router also have an impact, as well as your congestion control algorithm. Whether you are using BBR, new Reno, Cubic, it has an impact as well. And because this is a complex problem, uh, we start to uh, work together with uh, academics and other industrial partners uh, uh, to better understand these, uh, these questions. And there is actually a, a workshop that is going to be held at Stanford in December to further discuss uh, the buffer sizing problem. All right. So, so far we talked about how we change the buffer size can have an impact on the, uh, on the playback QoE. And buffer size uh, is, is something we can control if we control the routers, right? But for example, on the uplink case, where the buffer uh, is at the home gateway, and a lot of home router, home Wi-Fi routers or the modems, they, they don't expose the buffer size settings to our users. And even if they do, it will be very hard for our users to figure out what is the ideal settings for them. But uh, the good news, though, is all these network devices now start supporting active queue management. And if you don't know what is uh, active queue management, it essentially means it's a policy to help us mark and drop packets before the buffer becomes full. If we are not using active queue management, the default behavior of the queue is something called drop tail. What it, uh, how, uh, drop tail behaves uh, is that it will just wait until the buffer is full, and uh, when, uh, for, when the buffer is full, when the new packet comes in, there's no space, so drop it. That's what drop tail means. But if we have the active queue management, that means packet will be dropped by a certain policy, probabilistically, before the buffer is full. There are many popular AQM policies out there. I won't go into the detail, but like there are RED, ECN, Cuddle. But I will focus on this particular one called uh, 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 Flow Queue Cuddle. So Flow Queue Cuddle, as its name suggested, it will maintain multiple queues for each flow. And when a packet comes in, it will be mapped to the corresponding queue. And then for within each queue, we will track the, each packet's uh, how much time it has already stayed in the queue. And then we will drop it if, um, if it's, uh, the, the time stayed in the queue has already larger than a certain threshold. All right. So we want to set out to understand the impact of these, uh, the FQ cuddles impact on the, on the playback quality. So this is our experimental setup. Uh, we set uh, the download speed and the up, uh, up uplink speed uh, to a common value that we see in our network. And we also set uh, our buffer sizing to two values just to see whether there's an impact from the buffer sizing as well as we pick two uh, common values we see on our network for the RTT. And then we just compare the uh, drop tail policy versus the F, uh, a flow queue cuddle policy to see uh, what's the impact. To create some congestion, we also introduce a bug data upload uh, uh, from a TCP. All right, so this is the result. The first metrics we are looking at is the uh, play delay. That's the y-axis. So what we see is that full queue cuddle uh, have a consistent play delay, regardless of your buffer size setting, regardless of your run shift time. It has a pretty consistent play delay. Run, uh, the drop tail, on the other hand, it will depend on the buffer size we have, as we saw in the first half of the talk. Um, the larger the buffer size, then the larger the play delay. Another interesting thing that we saw is uh, when there is a congestion flow, uh, drop flow will actually uh, make us ramp up the quality uh, in a much slower way. Compared to FQ cuddle, it, when there is a competing flow, we actually ramp up much faster and just as if there is no congestion uh, competing flow uh, there. 
All right, to summarize the talk, uh, on the downlink, because we have the control on our router, we can, act, uh, we can uh, experiment with that. And we, there, we are seeing that we can have a much better uh, QoE if we fine tune the buffer sizing. And that is true across a number of uh, QoE metrics. Uh, even though on the network metrics uh, level, we don't, uh, there is no clear win. On the uplink, uh, we do see that uh, active queue management can help um, across a number of uh, metrics as well. Um, there are still a lot to learn in this area. But my main message to you all is that as a video community, we should start paying more attention to the impact from all these network devices, especially the buffer sizing and the queue management. Um, and collectively, we might have an impact on the networking community on how we can move things forward. After all, there's nothing more satisfying than seeing all these happy faces watching the great stories that we have helped to stream. They are my nieces, by the way. So thank you. And uh, I should have some time to take questions. <laughs>